Welcome along to the GEICO 15. GEICO 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. So the US men's national team are back in action this Saturday in a friendly against Bosnia and Herzegovina. And for more on the match and on the camp, US men's national team coach Greg Berhalter joins us now. Greg, it's always such a pleasure to have you on with us. We love having you on so regularly to update us. So before we get into everything, first of all, how are you and how is camp going? Everything is great. Um, you know, just to work with this group of players, a lot of young players, extremely motivated. It's been fun here out in L.A., great weather. We're really looking forward to closing the year out with a good performance against Bosnia. Oh, we're not jealous of the weather over in L.A. at all. It's absolutely pouring outside here. But this, Greg, is a heavily MLS-based group, isn't it? The MLS Cup is, of course, this weekend. But for others, the season has finished. So how valuable is this camp for these players to keep their fitness and their match sharpness through this winter stretch? You know, Poppy, that's the exact reason why we're doing this camp, because we know we have crucial qualifiers coming up in January, and we need to keep this core group of MLS players fit. Uh, so we'll do a camp in December, we'll do a camp in January as we prepare for the January um, FIFA window. So there's a lot of new names there and unfamiliar names, obviously some experience thrown in amongst the mix there. How do you put together this group of players, Greg? I mean, what's the process for you? There's so many players for you to choose from. Obviously, you have your European-based players, but domestic-based players, there's a bunch to choose from now, and the talent is so deep. It is. And, you know, the first thing is looking at the MLS-based players that have contributed so far in qualifying it's a priority to keep that group fit. So it's probably about 10 players. And then from there, we have to build out the rest of the roster. For us to be effective in training, we need at least 20 field players. So now it's, it's really giving guys opportunities that, um, you know, that haven't been in before. Some guys have been in a, a while ago. So it's really trying to tr track their prog progress and then work with some new players like Jonathan Gomez, um, Colby Henry, you know, really young players that with big potential. And it's been fun to see them. Yeah, it's pretty awesome for all of us as well to get familiar with some of the new names that have been put into the mix there. We're excited to see their progress under you. Um, you must be excited to get some time to be spent with them. What is the plans for this uh, training camp? I mean, you've also got that big game coming up at the weekend. But what is the plans training-wise, tactically-wise? How do you want to break this down? So we looked at the fitness level so far, and, and our idea is just to maintain fitness. We don't need to build fitness right now. The guys have had a long season. So it's just keeping them ticking over. We're doing, we're doing some um, build-up from goalkeepers, some build-up from midfield, some fun games, you know, competing and small-sided. Really just keep it loose, but really focused on um, maintaining those fitness levels. Greg, it's so good, as Ian said, to see the rise of the talent through these World Cup qualifiers. And now you've got some more players to have a look at, 12 of which are uncapped. And you just mentioned what it's been like off the pitch. But what's it been like on the, on the pitch, sorry, but what's it been like off the pitch seeing their chemistry and cohesion come together? Because it's a lot of new faces coming in and out, isn't it? It is. And, um, you know, it's a work in progress. We rely on the veterans to, to show them the way, teach them about the, the USMNT culture. Um, and then it's just fun to sit back and, and watch the bonding that takes place over the course of a two week camp. You know, when everyone starts, they're kind of uh, unsure. And then as the camp goes, you see the bonds start to build and and the togetherness uh, really, really take place. So that's been fun. You know, watching you play, Greg, obviously, I know how much you love the game. Now you're a coach. Does an element of yourself want to come out and practice and want to focus on def defenders and, and try to help nourish them along? I know you're the head coach and it's your job to, to try and nourish all these younger players, no matter what position they play. But do you spend a bit more time with the defensive players trying to share some of that experience you gained in your career? I think, you know, there's part of the individual instruction that, that we can, um, you know, that I, I can certainly help the defenders with. But... As a coach, you know, we're looking at, you know, the bigger picture, the, the tactical side of it, where it's more group instruction. Um, but it will be common for me to just grab a guy on the side, go over with some video with them and, and really hone in on the individual part of it. So World Cup qualifying resumes late January. The U.S. second at the minute in the standings. Good positioning heading into that new calendar year. But how do you evaluate where this team is right now, Greg? We're in a good spot. It, it's been a great year, 2021. Um, but you know, you're only as good as as your your last game, and your big your next game is your biggest game. You know, all the cliches that I can give you hold true to this group as well. You know, we're not satisfied. We have we have a ways to go before we qualify, and that's our focus. So as much as we're happy with winning two trophies and being in second place and 
you know, having a, a tie in the record for wins in a year. Um, you know, for us, it's about what comes next. I know you've gone through this process as a player, but now you're the man in charge and there comes a great deal of pressure with getting results and obviously getting this group to a World Cup. Has there been any surprises along the way for you now you're the man who's the head coach? I mean, you spent so many years as a player listening to a head coach. Now you're the man that everybody else is listening to. Yeah, you know, it's I, I try not to focus on that. I mean, as big as this job is, and I understand it's a big job, you know, it's still coaching and it's still connecting and it's still build, building a group of players in order to be successful. So really a lot of fundamental principles to any coaching job. And that's what we focus on. And, you know, we try to tune out the outside and just focus on what we're doing as a group. Well, it's been another record-breaking season, hasn't it, for Americans in Europe so far. We're seeing so many players getting such valuable minutes for their club teams. Is there anything in particular that's really stood out to you, Greg, from Europe so far? You know, it's it's been amazing to watch our guys. And when I think about, to me, the most impressive thing is when we have Champions League matchups against each other, you know, when Christian's playing against Weston and Brendan's playing against Timmy Weah and, you know, like Jordan's playing against someone, you know, these are the things that are just incredible to me that we can tune in and watch Champions League soccer and have Americans going against each other. It's brilliant. I mean, it's incredible. And I've never experienced anything like it in my life. We're so blessed to see so many Americans getting the opportunity. What has your communication been like with the European based players? Because there has been a controversial moment for Tyler, new coach in charge. Zach getting some playing time now at Manchester City. Christian going through his injury. Obviously, Weston missing out recently with games. What is your communication like with the group of players who are not in camp but are stuck in Europe right now? You know, just support. That's all That's all we can do from our end is just support them. Um, Ian, you know what it's like being abroad. And, you know, again, as much as, as the, the, the highest level that they're at, there's still, you know, lifestyle differences. There's still, you know, the busy schedule that take a toll on you mentally. So as much as we can support them from our end, um, we try to do that. And, you know, every player has his own journey, has his own story. And it, it's been fun to watch that unfold for these young players. All right, Greg, time now for the GEICO 15-second statement. We've just about concluded the group stage in the Champions League. Villarreal and Atalanta, of course, still to play. Uh, that one postponed due to snow today. But we want an early prediction from you, Greg. Who do you think is going to win this season's Champions League? Oh, man, I hope I don't give them the kiss of death. But I think this is Manchester City's year to win the Champions League. Nice. What? Oh my! Uh, get Christian on the phone. I'm calling Christian right now. Tyler is obviously out, but everybody else. I mean, Weston. Weston just finished top of the group. I can't believe it. Craig's he's just going with Zach Steffen. Oh, come though, on. Ian. He's got to, we're putting him in a tough spot oh. here, but he's going with. No, I love the answer. Yeah. Love the answer. Yeah, we it's do. a good answer. Brilliant. Safe, safe one, Greg. We'll let you away with that one. <laughs> but I was interested to see who you were going to choose, though, Greg, because as Ian said, I mean, it's just anyone's game, isn't it, at the minute? It but is. great stuff. Always good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us, and best of luck with the upcoming match. Thank you, guys. Great speaking to you.